Physicists often like to go back 2,500 years to Democritus, who, who thought that everything was composed ultimately of some smallest indivisible thing called an atom, atomos in Greek. Maybe I'm not pronouncing that right. But um, in fact, it wasn't until 100 years ago that anyone truly uh, believed or knew that there were atoms as such. The atom is the smallest element of, uh, well, any chem chemical element. We now know that, however, an atom has sort of a substructure. And the substructure is a nucleus in the middle and electrons orbiting around that nucleus. An atom is uh, one of uh, what were thought to be the basic units of existence. Uh, as, uh, as recently as about uh, 1910, uh, there are about uh, 10 billionths of a uh, centimeter across. And uh, going back to the Greeks, people thought that everything uh, could be made up of a finite set of uncuttable objects called atoms. We've since learned uh, during the 20th century, the last hundred years or so, that atoms are not the most basic things. They can be broken up into electrons, protons, and neutrons, so-called subatomic particles. And those protons and neutrons can be broken up even further into things called uh, gluons and quarks. The nucleus determines what type of atom you've got. However many protons and neutrons are in it uh, determines what chemical isotope you have. Okay. So, uh, when we physicists think about atoms, we think about it definitely in terms of uh, that structure. A very tiny nucleus uh, with electrons going around it. To, to give you an idea how small the nucleus is, imagine an atom being inside the, the nave of a huge cathedral. Then the size of the nucleus compared to that huge cathedral would be about the size of a fly. Okay, it's really, really small compared to the whole size of the atom. Once people were convinced that there were atoms, uh, people didn't know how the stuff inside atoms was arranged. They knew that there were electrons. In 1896, electrons were discovered by J.J. Uh, Thompson. And they thought there must be a corresponding positive charge to balance the negative charge of the, the electrons in an atom. But they didn't know how this positive charge was distributed. So they thought it might be uh, a raisin cake, meaning that there was some sort of fluffy stuff which, with positive charge and the electrons, little dots uh, inside it, the raisins. So they started to do experiments. And the way we do experiments uh, today really comes out of what they were doing 100 years ago, taking particles, shooting them at material, and seeing what comes out. So in 1910, 1911, uh, Ernest Rutherford and his graduate students, Geiger and Marsden, that's the Geiger who made Geiger counters, uh, did an experiment where they had a very thin gold foil and an alpha particle source. Alpha particles are the biggest, heaviest particles that come out in natural radioactivity. They, in fact, uh, turn out to be the nucleus of a helium atom, two protons and two neutrons. But that's not important for th this purpose. All they knew is that there were these things called alpha particles, and they could shoot them at things and see them bounce off. So if the atom was this raisin cake thing, the alpha particles would go through and get deflected a little bit. To their great surprise, they saw that the alpha particles sometimes would bounce straight back. Uh, Rutherford said it's like shooting a bullet at a piece of tissue paper and having it come bouncing straight back at you. A very striking discovery. And he went off and calculated it and realized that the size of the nucleus must be extremely tiny compared to the, uh, the size of the atom. That was a, a really great discovery. I like to think of the universe in what I call a bricks and mortar model. All right, and the bricks 
are the stuff of which you build you know, your atoms and molecules and everything out of. And those, the bricks typically have mass. And when there's a, then those, are, those are one kind of particle, like quarks and electrons. Uh, they're the bricks. And then there's another kind of particle called uh, the, the force particle. It's generally called a boson. And they're the ones that exert force between two uh, matter particles. And they typically don't have mass, although there are some force particles that do have mass. It's, mass is a very interesting thing. Mass is basically the resistance of any object to uh, a force being applied on it. It's like inertia. It's the tendency of something to want to stay in the same place. 